I thought it would get old, but it's been a couple <laughs> weeks and it got me like it was the very first time. What's up? And welcome back to Kind of Funny's Jurassic Park slash World in review. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes and I am joined by the big daddy himself, Greg Miller. Kalu Kale Springfield. It is Christmas in May, Joey Noel. Hello. The Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. He's only continuing to break down before our very eyes. <laughs> and rounded out our group. I feel so bad for him right now. He's having some trouble with his eyes. It's the one and only producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Don't feel bad for me, Tim. And thank you for that nice intro. Because when you can't see very well, you can't see that horrible intro that Cameron made for me. <laughs> wow. I'm happy about wow. it. I'm happy about it. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you holding up okay? I'm holding up okay for people who are, who only watch this series. I'm having I have a minor infection in my eyes. Uh, I'm on antibiotics, and I finally got the antibiotic ointment uh, that I needed. But unfortunately, uh, it's a little unsightly, and honestly, the the, the bright light uh, hurts my eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna wear these sunglasses the entire time. The beanie, just wearing for style. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Of course, this is kind of funnies in review where we rank, review, and recap different movie franchises each and every week right here on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You could also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review. If there's a franchise you love or hate, chances are we have rank, reviewed, and recapped it. Greg Miller, what's your question? That's awesome. Have you guys done the before sunrise, after sun? <laughs> oh, have you done that whole trilogy? Because that'd be be a great one for us to do. Yeah, we did that uh, last year, the start of, around the start of the pandemic. We must start, Andy, so. I was going to compliment you on how good you look in that shirt because you look fucking awesome, but now I'm going to tell you you look like a fucking guy wearing a green trash bag. Shut up. Green trash bags I've ever seen. You, you look fucking great. You look great. You look great. <laughs> oh, man. If you wanted to get the show for some reason live as we record it and ad-free, you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our Patreon producers, Anonymous, Molecule, and Fargo brady have done i appreciate you all so very very much today we're brought to you by me undies and credit karma but i'll get to that later uh real quick the update because people always want to know what in review things we're doing the schedule gets complicated as we try to do our best to hit the releases of different things so next week we're going to be doing a rewatch of star wars episode three to lead into the Obi-Wan series that starts the following week. And then that week on In Review, we're going to be giving you a double header of Top Gun and then Top Gun Maverick. Two reviews in one week. Wow. If you wanted to get a spoiler-free review from Joey Noel, Kevin, and Blessing of Top Gun Maverick, uh, you should go check it out right now on the Kind of Funny screencast feed or YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. Joey, without saying too much, how you feeling on it? Uh oh, you're muted. 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 But I believe oh no, I muted myself. Uh, it's great. It's great, everybody. It's great. Nick, you had a question. It might I, be no, enough. I was just I was going to ask you. I was going to ask Joey the same question because they they gave me a little feedback uh, on stream, and it sounds like I'm very excited for this film. I think Maverick's going to be real fun, real good. This was a movie I, that I walked out of, and I immediately, if I could have, would have walked in to see it again. Wow. Haven't felt that way since like Thor Ragnarok. Ooh, I have never even seen Top Gun one, so I'm very excited to do that Ooh, double header. What? Yeah, that Greg, 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 don't even your heart. Andy, Greg, you too, heart. right? I mean, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I expect it from Andy. Me and Andy getting into this together, man. It's it, the, so also the in review crew for Top Gun is going to be me, Andy, Nick, mm -hmm. Snow Bike Mike. And Matt Batson. Hell yeah. And I am wow. so fucking excited for this. That's a team, right, this. There. That's a team yeah, right there. It's about to be an adventure. So that's two weeks away. Very exciting. And then after that, we'll get right back in to Jurassic World 2. And then the following week, Jurassic World 3. Now, enough of all of that stuff. We're talking about Jurassic World, which original title was Jurassic Park Extinction. <gasps> it had a runtime of two hours and four minutes. The Indominus Rex has only seven minutes of screen time. The Tyrannosaurus Rex has two and a half minutes of screen time. Little fun facts for you, Andy. I know Thank you, you love those. Mm -hmm. Jurassic, Jura Jurassic, Faxix, Jurassic yep. Park. Mm -hmm. It felt like at any turn we were one syllable away from like a slur by accident. Yeah, so yeah. I'm proud yeah. of that. Okay, it felt like it felt dangerous. I don't like that feeling. <laughs> it's a dangerous game. Dangerous. You're working without a net on that one. I can go either way. Uh, it was released on June 12th, 2015, uh, which is seven years ago. Outrageous. 
insane to think about because I remember seeing this with with most of y'all in theaters. Um, and that was also uh, 22 years after Jurassic Park was originally released. So now 29 years <laughs> have passed since Jurassic Park released. Dang. I hate that. Really hate that. Uh, directed by Colin Trevorrow, an American filmmaker born in San Francisco, California. Mm-hmm. He made his Are we going to feature- talk about Greg sucking on whatever he's eating right now? <laughs> No, what do you got? Are just go, eating things you got, out of a, a tube goop hack? now? What do you got? You sucking down a goo pack? You go for a run later? I have a, a. This has been a Kirkland signature organic fruit and vegetable pouch, and fruit it's been and vegetable. <laughs> now here's what I'll say right now. Here's what I'll say to you right now. All right, we bought these for when Jen was prego and gonna pop this kid out. Right, and you needed food and snacks in the delivery room. Right, then she couldn't eat anything the whole time, so we have a bunch of lay around here. So then, months ago now, she brought one down with my lunch and put it here. I was like, this sounds disgusting. But I'm so desperately hungry because I forgot to eat lunch today. <laughs> I just ate that giant bowl of mini wheats and I saw it. I'm like, I need something. And it was delicious. It was just applesauce in a pouch. I'm, I'm going to fucking bring the entire box down here. You're going to see me <laughs> sucking these things left and right. That's the new recap oh. juice. That's the new recap yeah. juice. <laughs> exactly. What's it? Recap juice used to be whatever beer he could get his hands on. Now that he's a dad, it's fruits and vegetables in a pouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, Colin Trevorrow made his feature directorial debut with the science fiction comedy Safety Not Guaranteed in 2012. Oh, good movie. The critical and commercial success. Uh, then he achieved mainstream recognition his work on the Jurassic World entries, uh, which began when he co-wrote and directed the one we're about to talk about right now. Mm-hmm. Then he co-wrote the sequel, but did mm-hmm. not direct it. But then he's coming back for the final one. Co-writing and directing the third installment, Jurassic World Dominion, that it Andy still made could an amazing, change. Amazing meme of yeah, it could change. It could Andy, change those roles, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, people need to go check out Andy's Twitter, the Andy Cortez, for the best slash worst Jurassic World meme you will ever see. Uh, Barrett, if you could find that and bring it up at some point, I would appreciate it. And Nick would hate it. Um, He was also the co-writer and director of Star Wars Duel of the Fates until his departure in 2017, although he retained story credit when the project was re-envisioned as the rise of Skywalker. I don't know if you guys remember that, but he was supposed to be the director of Episode 9, and then everything changed. Another note for people, Nick is dying because his eyes messed up. I am fighting off a cold, and it is I'm not winning that battle. So I'm very sniffy, and my eyes keep watering in a weird way. So just keep up with it. Thank you, Barrett, for please bringing this up. This is I mean, uh, it's probably it's, it's probably for the best for Nick that he's blind now. You know. Yeah, yeah. The Wait, I'm, I'm for, for to audio out. listeners, Andy, do you want to explain what you did? <laughs> <laughs> I I I Google searched gangster minion, mm-hmm. and up uh, comes up a minion from Despicable Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of got like a sad hat, got a chain, holding like a bottle okay. of Hennessy, probably. Hennessy, yeah. yeah, the Hanny. Um, and I photoshopped a dinosaur out of Jurassic World, mm. one of those movies, and I put that in and uh, put the minion in, and then I titled it Jurassic World Da Minion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like yeah. D A and then Minion. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. I mean, that's, I don't understand why people would think I wouldn't like this unless there's a little picture of me being really old in it somehow. No, 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 no. That's it. It's just, it's just a work of art. And then guess what? Checked Mm. my old verified tab today. Yeah. Guess who liked the tweet? Kojima. The official Jurassic World Twitter account. (laughs) Oh, we got it up, everybody. All the way to the top. Uh, Bander SN. Uh, Barrett, can you please bring it up one more time? The visual. uh, As I, I say this, Bander SN in the chat says jesus it's like an nft <laughs> yeah yeah That's what I a lot of people in chat a lot of people in the comments are like andy you gotta mint this bro <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to andy for this abomination uh the music of this movie jurassic world was done by who andy cortez michael giacchino Horny the goat, James michael Horner. giacchino oh, okay. i would have oh, never shit. fucking oh. expected it because i was let down by the score in this movie i'll tell you what uh but hey everybody misses sometimes you yeah. know what i mean uh this movie had a budget of 150 million dollars and it had a box office joey i want you to guess the box office of jurassic world off of a budget of 150 million how much more money do you think this made i'm gonna say 250 million dollars i have no idea (laughs) jurassic world made 1.67 billion dollars 
in the box office, making it the seventh highest grossing film of all time. That third, is shocking. <laughs> the third highest grossing film of all time at the time of its release. That's so, wild. That's nuts. Having said that, it was only the second highest grossing film of 2015 because of Infinity War. No, earlier than that. Civil Star War. Wars. Star Wars. Civil War. Star Wars, The Force okay. Awakens. So, uh, okay. damn. Way off. These numbers are insane to think about. It is also the highest grossing film in Universal's film library, outpacing the Fast and Furious movies, which all of that is just also insane to think about. Um, and so this movie did better than the second one. Uh, we'll have to see where the third kind of lies. But, man, those are some absolutely insane numbers. Um I got a lot of fun facts about this movie. What I want to get to before we uh, give our thoughts on this movie. Bryce Dallas Howard and Judy Greer are sisters in this movie. They also play sisters in M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Oh. 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 Yeah. God, Judy Greer wow. in that. Yeah, yeah. Greg Miller, I want to start with you. What did you think of Jurassic World? <sighs> um, You know, it's... Not a good movie. It's an entertaining movie. And I think that's going to make it actually rank highly on the list of these Jurassic Park movies we've seen. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it definitely got to the point where I wrote, I jotted down in my notes over here because uh, I take notes on these films, right? Where er, this is going and it's going and it's like Vincent D'Onofrio takes control of like now Injun's in control. And I pause the movie. I'm like, ah, fuck, there's 30 minutes left in this movie. Yeah. Like this... This is a two hour movie that just crawls by, right? And I feel like it starts, I think, really strong. And I think it's outrageous to be here into the third sequel to Jurassic Park and have it just be that we as a people loved Jurassic Park so <laughs> much that we refuse to let it go. We're Can't like, go. we can get this back on track. And I really feel the start of the movie does a pretty good job of doing that of all right cool it's these kids they're going there this is happening it's a cool park it's a huge park blah blah and then it's when bryce dallas howard walks into the control room with nick miller from new girl and mm -hmm. the other comedian uh, girl that i can't remember her name of. Wrong, wrong missy where it's like what is this fucking scene Thank you, nick. what is this scene what are these characters ball and that's where we just like get into this really weird it's a it's not a Dino, it's a monster movie it's it, but it's not a full-blown horror movie but it kind of is but it's like that's what and we're gonna go and it's like it's a fun ride it's you know it's definitely a blockbuster popcorn check your brain at the door and watch this thing and there will be good performances and there will be terrible performances and there will be good motivation there'll be nonsense motivation and like at the the long and short of it this is the movie that launched two of our friends' careers, right? You have a young Cameron Cuff and a young Jack Quaid starring in This Is Brothers, and they are inside the gyroscope and doing all their things. So yeah, it's like, great. take anything else away from it, that happened here. And you I, really got me there for a second. Yeah, I did too. I was like, wow, did I watch the wrong movie? I was like, I don't think that was the. <laughs> I can't look, I at do that, say, I can look at that young boy and not be like, that's Jack Quaid. <laughs> but I do want to say, Tim, do you know who that young boy is? The young one. Wait, the, the, the older boy, kid. Simon. From yes. Love Simon. Love that. More importantly, the kid from a teacher with uh, the, Kate Mara. Yeah. That was a fun show. No, a fun show. It was a disturbing oh, show. Yeah. It was a very disturbing show. <laughs> I, I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong. Someone double check on this, but I believe the younger kids is Ty Simpson. It is. Simpson? Yeah. Oh, Iron Man 3. Oh, yeah. Iron Man 3. Oh, yeah. Iron Man 3. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Harley from Iron Man 3 yeah. and, and, of course, and, Endgame. Endgame. Yeah, which he yeah, grew up. Let me tell you what. I, I was like, this kid... No, I'm obviously not enjoying any of the. I don't like any of the kids in the Jurassic Park movies just because I feel like they're they're kind of written annoyingly. And I was about. I, I wrote so much shit about this kid, this particular kid, and the, the dynamic with the brother. Then I googled him, and I was like, wait a minute, he's the kid from Iron Man Three. And I shit you not, I deleted all of all of the bad stuff I wrote about him. I was like, you know what, this kid totally fucking redeemed himself. He was so funny in that movie. It's not his fault. So I took it out. God bless you. Good for you. That's growth. That's <laughs> yes, right the development from this <laughs> no. everybody. Thank you. You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the long and short of it is it's a movie that it turns out I had already purchased because probably I wanted to watch it and I didn't want to go to the theater. So I owned it when I turned it on. And it's that one of like, I don't remember anything from this film as I watched this film. And it's like, it's that kind of movie. <clears throat> Next. I want to go. Is anyone interested to get off the bench? Who wants to go? Next? I'll get off the bench. I'll throw it out. Go for it, Nick. Uh, I think this movie's fun. 
And I think this movie is fun because it is quasi self-aware. It knows it's literally remaking the first one and it's it, and and there's all that little meta commentary about it being bigger and better and 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 we actually get to see Jurassic Park up and running which I think is is actually kind of fun. Uh, and and there are moments in this movie where you go, fuck, I would go to Jurassic Park. This is cool. Like if this had. Oh, man, when they're riding the baby Triceratops. Fucking cool as shit, right? Or like the little gyroscope balls. And like that looks so like so much fun. Granted, there's no way that Disney would uh, ever allow that to be not on rails. But Drive whatever. wherever you want this to. This is universal. Yeah. <laughs> go wherever you want to on this island. Go down this hill. It doesn't matter. Um, I think the movie is obviously it's got some flaws. And I don't think it's anywhere close to as special as the first Jurassic Park. Um, but. For a movie, I think the director, I think Colin Trevorrow and the the producers knew what they were making here. They're like, let's make this ridiculous. Let's go a little overboard with this. Let's have some of the characters be be quasi cartoon characters. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and uh, the the actor that plays uh, the, the 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 guy that owns it, Masrani. Those two guys are just completely out there, but in a fun way, and it's got a fun vibe. And we see that we get to see the fun turn of Doctor Wu from literally in this movie being like a nice guy to just being an evil, <laughs> just evil, evil, evil human being or whatever. Um, but I think that the movie obviously rides on the shoulders of Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. And I think they have good chemistry and I think they have some good back and forth. And I enjoy the scenes that they're in. Um, and when, by the time we get to, you know, the, the velociraptors hunting down the, the Indominus Rex, I'm like, this movie has gone so far off the map that I'm just kind of along for the ride with it. Um, but it's funny because Greg... As I was finishing my type, I was finishing the, the synopsis, writing up the synopsis for it, I saw your tweet where you're like, man, this movie is long. And this was the first time I watched it where I did feel like, oh, yeah, they could have shaved off a few minutes. But and all these it, Jurassic World motherfucking defenders, they actually want to, Eric Goldman pops up. Actually, it's not that long. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Goldman. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about the time. I'm talking about the fact that I'm here watching these drag. morons run around the fucking park. <laughs> But I mean, when she, you know, there's, uh, it drags a little bit toward the end or toward the beginning of the third act. But by the time she says open paddock nine, you're like, let's fucking go. I remember seeing that in theaters being like, I can't believe they're doing this. And it still hits me. And I'll tell you what, not, not a good movie of any stretch of the imagination, but a fun movie, the best kind of fun movie that you could ever want. And when I saw this in theaters, I had a giant bowl of popcorn and that's what these movies should be going forward. Joeskis Noelis. Oh, what wow. did you think? Mexicus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much in line with everybody here. I think I really like the first like two thirds of this movie. And then like in kind of indifference to where Nick is, uh, by the time we get to the third act, I kind of have reached, I have powered through the like, oh my gosh, how long is this movie? I have like three different notes of like, how is there 50 minutes left? How is there 40 minutes left? And how has it only been 10 minutes since I last looked at the time? <laughs> and I have that again at 30 minutes. And I was like, apparently I'm just checking this every 10 minutes from now on. Um, but yeah, I think by the end, I'm just kind of ready for this to be over. I think, I forget who I was talking to, but pretty much in my general movie ranking, if you can, <laughs> I'm always going to give movies that are 90-ish minutes an extra half star for being yeah. short and concise and just nailing it than I am that like i'm not going to give that any sort of courtesy like that to a two-hour movie and this one does feel particularly long um this has a really good cast that i kind of forgot about some of like the side character stuff not that judy greer's in it for very long um i forgot about jake johnson and lauren lapkus mm -hmm. uh i had no idea that nick robinson was the older kid i think at that point i just probably didn't know him from anything else um but i do really like seeing uh jurassic park fully functional mm -hmm. and i think it's kind of impressive that we've seen three now four now five however many movies were into it and i would still go to jurassic park yeah like I would too. And, uh, here's knowing question. all the risks how knowing many, all Joey, of the deaths how many people would have to have died at jurassic park for you and me not to go if we had like half price tickets I, and I how would many pay full would price for it. So you know, have the conversations, know. right? Of just like, well, it's not like the dinosaurs would go crazy every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what are the actual you know. odds? of the, It's like kind of like Westworld. Like, well, exactly. I'd, yeah, they might fucking murder me, but maybe I just have some kind of crazy robot orgy. And that sounds pretty, you know what I mean? That like, sounds cool yeah. too. I'd wait till it got to like the 20 mark 20 to be years. like, now I feel safe going because surely enough measures have been put into place like, out. like mm -hmm. this like this is gonna sound terrible but like whenever there's a plane crash or a plane fucks up i'm like 
now's the safest time to fly because everybody's yeah. like paranoid mm-hmm. about their plane fucking right, they're up all now. checking the doors and stuff yeah right? yeah, yeah 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 andy but what would you do let if the door off open the boat <laughs> everybody's flying out oh, no, that's, <laughs> this is the problem <laughs> 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 Eddie, what would you do if you get off the boat? They're like, welcome to Jurassic Park, and they just put a gun in your chest. They're like, good luck, motherfucker. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Andy Cortez, what did you think? Oh, this movie's stupid as fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> this goddamn movie is so stupid, but um, but it's fun. Like, it's it's incredibly stupid and it's eye rolly, but I had such a fun I had my time was made better because I was watching with friends. I was with Kevin Ace X, uh, Chris Anka, and Snowbike Mike, and it reminded me of watching Mortal Kombat with you, the most recent Mortal Kombat movie. Watching it with Tim and Blessing and Kevin, and and Cameron Cuff, mo- <laughs> and Cameron Cuff. That's right. And the moments that you may have kind of been eye rolly at were met with laughter and like get the fuck out of here like this is so goddamn stupid the uh, you know he, the indominus is about to get the final kill on the t-rex and <laughs> what do you hear blue in the distance cool Ooh. making her fucking call <laughs> and then the slow-mo shot of her right like this is the dumbest fucking thing of all time but uh but it's it's entertaining in 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 a lot of moments, and I'm I'm still a sucker for kind of those larger scale. Um, not even I don't want to even call them set pieces, but just like we're showing off a new dino, and this big underwater dino is cool as shit. And I'm still a sucker for seeing things like that. Uh, the way the when movies can play with scale in that sort of way, I think it's really dope. Um, but yeah, this movie's stupid as fuck, and <laughs> it's still gonna rank high. Shockingly, <laughs> I think overall I'm coming in even a little lower than any of you guys, really? but I'm right. I'm right there with the the majority of the vibe of the conversation. I think for me, the final third of this movie is my mm-hmm. favorite thing. And if there was a different two thirds that led into it. I think I would uh, enjoy it for how stupid it is a lot more. I enjoy the third act for how stupid it is. Seeing the T-Rex coming back, the T-Rex getting a hero moment, I feel is the type of commitment that I appreciate from them making a Jurassic Park sequel. Like I, I think that this movie succeeds where Lost World failed in almost every regard. And I think that that's the most complimentary thing I can say about it. Like really kind of treating the T-Rex, like it's all about wanting to root for the monster, right? And I think in this one, it's like the T-Rex is the the monster we want to root for so giving him the theme giving him the moments and then even like building up blue in this and having blue kind of team up with him and them having this moment like all of it is so stupid in a way that i'm like i wish the rest of this movie was this stupid i actually yeah. think they take <laughs> themselves a little too seriously uh to kind of have the whole to, to earn the two hour plus runtime of it all like there is a lot of elements of it the the most fun i have with this is when it is cartoony like vincent d'onofrio is incredible like the moment you see him come on screen you're like, you're like this evil bastard that's a bad guy <laughs> let's do some what bad shit's he gonna we're, do you know like, the same team we're the same Save you and me <laughs> to the hand in your mouth. No, like, every, I love <laughs> his so character stupid. so much because throughout the movie, it just gets more and more <laughs> stupid. That from the first time you see him, you're like, he's a bad guy. Dude. Towards the end, when you see him, you're like, his plan is to use the raptors and control them. Like, that is hilarious. And they're doing it in the same movie that they set it up. I don't know. I love that type of stuff. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I think that the kind of, ridiculous rude goldberg machine that they have the scene of the assistant lady dying where she gets mm-hmm. picked up by the oh pterodactyl God. and like dropped off like ten thousand times dropped into the water they pick them up pick her up over and over and over and then the giant thing andy was talking about fucking kills him that's when this movie shines is when it's like yo we're fucking stupid and we know it and we're giving you guys you sick fucking perverts out there we're giving you exactly what you want from this type of dinosaur movie you're not getting the cerebral vfx you've never seen before shit that you got from the from jurassic park one no we're just giving you the fucking pure fun uh the hit. towards the third act it starts just turning into a jurassic park one jerk off session mm-hmm. and like I appreciate it. You know, it is kind of what it is. It's a dumb legacy sequel 20 years after. And I just feel like when it leans into all that stuff, it's so much more fun. Adonimus Rex. Oh, it has camo now. 
the reveal scene of it having camo is hype as fuck. <laughs> All that type of stuff is so awesome. Chris Pratt on the fucking motorcycle in the pack with the Raptors. All that shit's great. I just feel like the majority of this movie didn't have the energy of all the other things I just named. All those things that I like, and if they committed to those things, I think it could have been like, yo, this was a really fun time, and I stand by this movie 100%. Here I'm kind of like, ah, I'm with Andy. I think it's actually going to end up ranking pretty high. Um, And that is just a really, really sad statement for what these Jurassic movies actually are, as opposed to what they could be. And I haven't seen any movie after this one. I have fingers crossed they get stupider in a good way, but Mm -hmm. we'll have to wait. We'll have to see. Uh, But before we get to the plot, (laughs) let's get a word from our sponsors. Shout out to MeUndies for sponsoring this episode. You know those days when your coffee shop is out of cold brew and your air conditioner breaks and you try to go to the beach but there's zero parking spots? Yeah, life can be hard. Good thing MeUndies is here to help you take a break from the hardships of the world and give yourself a soft summer. Of course, I don't need to tell you. I got the MeUndies shirt. I got the MeUndies lounge pants. I'm wearing the MeUndies undies, the socks. Even my face mask is MeUndies. I absolutely love MeUndies and their soft micro modal fabric and you're going to love it too. I absolutely absolutely guarantee it with me undies light and breathable micromodal fabric you can stay comfy and cool all summer long they have super fun seasonal prints and tons of styles to choose from in sizes extra small all the way up to 4xl me undies has a great offer for all of you any first time purchasers you can get 15 percent off if you sign up for the free to join membership you can apply that 15 percent off to their already discounted membership prices uh, to get 15 percent off your first order and a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee go to meundies.com slash kinda funny. That's M E U N D I E S dot com slash kinda funny. Shout out to Credit Karma for sponsoring this episode. Have you ever been rejected for a credit card? It happens way too often. That's why Credit Karma created Karma Confidence Technology, helping members apply with more confidence. Are you earning credit card rewards? Credit Karma can help you compare your rewards options so you can find a card that fits your lifestyle, helping you earn miles or cash back for spending money that you're going to spend anyways. Of course, I'm a huge fan of that. I love Credit Karma. One of my favorite features is how Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply, which helps you apply with more confidence, and then it doesn't affect your credit score. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. Uh, They also partner with a wide range of card issuers, so you can be sure that you're exploring all sorts of options. I love Credit Karma. It's so easy to use. Fantastic stuff. Credit Karma, create your own karma. Ready to find the card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. That's creditkarma.com. I have not heard a whole lot of encouraging words about the future movies. <laughs> Let's put it this way. <laughs> I, 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 remember I blacked I'm, out that the, the last one even came out. Like I, 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 I remember I was I was dead set the new one was the second one. You guys were like, no, it's the third one. I was like, really? You just assumed COVID had moved it? <laughs> so, Nick, have you... Go for it. Welcome to Jurassic Plot. Jurassic World. Just like taking a stroll through the woods, Tim, Mm -hmm. 65 million years ago. This movie kicks off and the music is scary, but not as scary as dinosaurs. (laughs) A bunch of scary dino babies hatch and their eyes look like what, Greg? That's right. That of the man himself, Beals with Bob, our Lord and Savior, the dark God. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Judy Greer's in this. Totally forgot about that. And I can already tell upon watch, she's going to be thoroughly underutilized. Like Judy Greer is in a lot of the things she's in. And for fuck's sake, why do you cast Judy Greer if you're going to just sideline her as one of these characters? I digress. David Wallace is in it too who oh yeah from the office david yeah. wallace from the office from the yeah, hit, uh sitcom in america You're i don't right. watch things that are boring me and tam have the right perspective on that get on the right side of history uh zach is leaving his girlfriend she's like mm, i love you and he's like let's shake hands uh and his little brother uh gray who I, I will probably refer to as gary a lot in this is a dork and will probably never get laid mom tells them to run if something chases them and everyone's like ha 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 and off we go to Isla Nublar again with a boat full of single ladies for Zach to get oh, to, to gawk at. 
Uh, Aunt Claire, uh, who we'll set up here, doesn't meet them at the dock because uh, kids suck. So her assistant Zara is there to pick them up, and we hear the theme. And the park is dope. Looks like Hammond was on to something, Tim. I know you were a naysayer. Guess what? The old fucking codger was right. Don't doubt uh, that's it. True. That is true. Now, uh, uh, dropping in some facts here. I last thing I did say is I totally agree that like them actually having the park open, fantastic call. I thought that was cool. Story wise, they did not set it up well enough. After the deaths that happened before, how they're just like, you know what? We're doing it again. I feel like I just missed that part because it seems like they did. They even have an answer. No. Who gives a the new guy had John Hammond's dying request to make the park, and he made the park. Great, cool. That but makes no still, sense, but it's, whatever. It's weird because it's still run by Ingen. So you would yeah. think, oh, Ingen went bankrupt and they and another company came in and bought them out. Similar to like follow me on here, it's a bit of a walk, but similar to how like in Blade Runner 2049 neander wallace's like uh, company was not that high rail corp anymore that had gone bankrupt when replicants got like banned he picked up that technology bought it on the cheap and then went and, like colonized worlds and shit but like maybe that. it's you know we don't we again there's a gap there that i'm sure they wanted to fill in with a comic book prequel comic book but maybe it is just that the engine we know did go bankrupt someone an embracer group bought it at auction mm. and then started calling themselves ingen nordic and they just yes. need the Nordic <laughs> off here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's on to something here. That, uh, that reference th- makes a lot more sense for me. Because w- when Nick talks about Blade Runner, sorry, Nick, I don't watch boring things. So. Exactly. Oh, God, me and Andy got things to do. Art. Sorry, hold on. Let's Tim, let's stare at the camera for a second for a dramatic beat and let Andy <laughs> laugh at it. Because apparently that's what he thinks is funny. Everyone shut up. I actually really like that movie. You gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> There's no more Andy Cortez movie than Blade Runner 24. Like, come movie. the hell on. Uh, but the fact I got for you <laughs> is that New Orleans has an abandoned Six Flags theme park that has been used for other movie productions. And the filmmakers created a 300 foot by 200 foot main street and boardwalk in the amusement park's abandoned parking lot. And they shot on the set for two and a half weeks so it was actually a theme park that they use for this which i think is pretty cool oh that's cool i mean all of this looks great right over in the learning center kids are learning and i'm not gonna lie they have that cute little dna strand back and it's super cool and if this was a place DNA. if this was a place you could take your kids what a fucking incredible experience it's gonna be but also when you start thinking about it right there's a couple things in here i'm like maybe humans are the monsters because we're about to see them watch a, a giant shark get eaten by a whale dinosaur and then a goat get eaten by a T-Rex. And everyone's like, yeah, this is the best day of my life. I would be throwing up on the fucking stuff. Like, you know, like, what had happened to the future of humanity that were just so displaced to the violence? But they, they do that. Petting, they have little they do that. Yeah. And the lion house at the SF Zoo, they have like feeding hour that you can go to watch. With live animals? No, do, well, the, I don't do the think, lions hunt down think, a fucking gazelle in front? Do they chain a gazelle well, to the floor the and then the lions just or the it? shark or whatever definitely was no, dead. But the goat was alive, Joey. Put it on your list. Goat number two. Oh Whoa. shit! But you didn't have Joey. an issue with that for goat number one. Is that because there wasn't an audience? For Billion goat number bottom. one, it was you were supposed to feel tension because the goat was like trapped there. And in this one, they're like, "Oh, it's a goat." And everyone's it's like, "Yay!" <laughs> There's literally everyone starts like, "Oh, he killed it! That's so great!" Yeah. One kid's over there in the corner, fucking. I mean, these dinosaurs himself. are celebrities, Nick. This is what they wanted. They need to be bigger and they need to be better and have more teeth. Remember? I'm just saying, maybe, maybe we deserve to lose. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see. Claire finally catches up with Zach and Cody and and pawns them off on Zara. <laughs> She's about as comfortable around children as I am, and I can see all of this. I appreciate uh, that it's been seven years since she's seen them, yeah. and Judy Gurra just sends them off. Like, yeah. there you go. Just, just sign on screen go see them. Oh, great. We'll get to that in a second. Do we'll you think that, that they're, like, cool with their friends because their aunt, like, runs or whatever dress? No, her. their friends don't care. You don't think so? They, I mean, they don't talk about it. Yeah, they haven't seen her in seven no. years. You know, my, your, my uncle works in Nintendo only goes so far, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jake Johnson in this in, is in this, and he wears a cool OG Jurassic Park shirt. We get a little meta commentary here where he's like, uh, "The original park was the shit. It was the it was the best. And everything's just a rough sort of uh, approximation of it." Uh, also, the lady from the Wrong Missy is in it, whose name is Lauren, Lauren Lapis. Thank you. I'll refer to her by her her God given name, her Christian name from now on. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Claire is not very empathetic to the dinosaurs. She's all business. And then we meet Miss, Mr. Masrani. Uh, he picks up Claire in a helicopter despite not having a license, and he really cares about the guests and the animals. This guy's all about the fun, guys. He's just like Hammond. I don't want to spare any expense. She's like, well, we're kind of shit. We're, we're, we're basically bleeding money here. And uh, she only speaks in spreadsheets to him. He's like, just live a little. And then he tells her the theme of this movie. Uh, in order to be happy in life, you have to realize you're never really in control. Hammond handed over the keys to the kingdom to Maserati uh, with his dying breath, and he's definitely sparing. His name's not Maserati, is it? <laughs> it's Maserani, I believe. Okay, Mr. Okay, Maserati. Okay. 
Got it. But I'm Italian and I have to throw yeah, the do extra your thing, Do your thing there, Nick. I love it. I love it. He's the bad love, guy from Spider Man. Yeah. I love, oh, yes, he is. Mm. I love you calling him Maserati almost as much as I love him. <laughs> like this guy, this guy, everything he does great. till his dying moment is pitch perfect for a different movie. That's because, Tim, he's the Tim <laughs> Gettys of the Jurassic Park. I love if it. If you dude. own Jurassic Park, this would be you. But like, I'm going to, I can fly a helicopter. I fly Actually, the helicopter. He's kind of like Tim and Kevin because I can see yeah. Kevin be like, oh, <laughs> no, Kevin would fly definitely helicopter. fly the helicopter. Yeah, I could, yeah, don't worry about it. Guys. Dude, it's, it's like I'm it was so great seeing him in a role here that wasn't the role in Spider-Man because I was the like an amazing Spider-Man right wasn't he like the, yeah the guy he was, was the, like, the oh, one with oh, Andrew oh, Garfield he's the one that was like we gotta you gotta fucking get this uh study going uh lizard man and lizard man fucking pumped his and he had a little wet fucking hand you know oh um, yeah the rat animations yeah the little rat animation so it was, my parents death gonna go down to the subway death. it was just cool seeing this dude like acting <laughs> as a different character because like i'm so burned by how shitty that character was it's it's true he's great in this he's completely comical and just like just like he's lovable he's fun they push him way too over the edge with a performance but you know what better better to go too far with these movies than 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 not far enough anyway Is he lovable? Uh, I think he's likable. I mean, he, he's they try- likable enough. But then at the end, he like literally goes from like, this isn't fucking science or whatever. Like you, I didn't ask for this. I'm like, well, no, the whole movie, you've been like a fucking trying to get people in the park and make money. Like you say, like, you know, you want people to enjoy themselves. How are you? But like, also, they're doing all this for you. Like, what do you say? You have to take some responsibility for making these crazy ass dinosaurs. Yeah. And that's where I think this willful ignorance, you know, that maybe you missed an email. Possible deniability. <laughs> and that storyline, I think, is what kind of holds this movie back from actually being a good movie, right? Where the original Jurassic Just Park. Just that. Movie, well, there's a lot of other things. I, I, agree, but, I agree with it, though. Like, that, I think it starts with that because that is like the foundation of the entire thing. And like, yes. it when you can only go off the rails if there are rails that make sense. And then mm-hmm. that's where you get things like that. Fast and Furious, where it's like, we love them for being dumb, but it's like, okay, cool, there's a logic we're following here. The logic's stupid, but right. we're following it. There's With this, it's kind of like, there's characters, and, the, and the, the worst Fast and Furious movies are the ones that aren't consistent, right? right. With this, it's kind of like, from the get-go, you're like, y'all are going back to the park, you're gonna have to explain that. And they over-explain all of it in a way that's like, well, that doesn't make sense. And then from there, we're all kind of questioning every single thing that happens, so it makes it stupid instead of stupid fun. It's it's funny though because I, I I will disagree a little bit with you. I mean I, I agree with the top level. You're right. It's stupid instead of stupid, but but I would say like I don't think they needed. To, I think they I don't think they needed to explain why the park was open. That could have been explained with one one or two lines. I mean like we all watched the Fire Fest documentary, and it's not going to shock any of us if they bring that fucking festival back and people actually go to it, right? Because human beings are stupid and Instagram rules. So the fact that they the fact that they brought people back, I never really even questioned that. It's it's the lack of a sort of moral B story here that really, that falls, that that makes the movie a little less fun for me. And I, I we, we talked about it when we watched Jurassic Park 1, and I keep bringing it back up. The best scene in that movie is when they're sitting around the table talking about the morality of all this. And in, we don't have that here. We have the boss who should be talking about the bottom line. Claire's character should be like, hey, these are animals. Like, she's not likable up until pretty much she starts hanging out with Owen because she's just kind of all business and kind of a shitty When aunt. she ties her shirt in a half foot tie. Which is hilarious, which is funny. He's like, what is that supposed to do? She's like, supposed to tell me you're ready. He's like, whatever. Right. But but I, I just feel like those roles were, I think, intentionally written that way because they're like, we're going to, you know, this guy's supposed to be more like him and he's supposed to only care about this. But a guy that ha- was in charge of b- doing this insurmountable task of bringing this park back after this public disaster, like nightmare of these three movies that had happened prior, like that guy would be hard as fucking nails. So I just feel like those character dynamics were a little bit off and it holds the movie back. And but, also that that main conversation with BD Wong. Well, there's BD like, Wong, but there's also I mean that's a perfect point. You guys brought it up, right? Where he's like, I didn't sign up for this. It's like, really, you wouldn't mm-hmm. fucking know everything that went into this thing. Like you're super smart. And now, yeah, I love that too. Where he's like, Come you know, I can't on, tell you that's man. classified. Like I own the like, fucking I own the fucking company. company. What, are what are you about? fucking talking about? I'm the head of InGen. Like, what are you saying, right? Maybe he's not the head of InGen because apparently InGen is like this other company that's operating. Yeah, I don't like, think he is. I think he uh, does yeah, the park. They're, they're the like PMCs. Park. <laughs> <laughs> <But> InGen <laughs> is like the PMCs of Metal Gear Solid, just like but some like, outside company. But you know, like Hammond was an interesting character and had depth because he did all these things that were morally ambiguous and really kind of unethical. But he did them for a for for a good reason because he wanted to make something magical. And that's you, you sympathize with that. This guy is just kind of like, I'm like, are you paying attention to any? Like, do you read emails or like does your assistant run the company? What the fuck's going on here? I don't know. But I digress. We're gonna go over and we're gonna meet Indom and Geninus Rex, right? They head over to Indominus Rex, who I will refer to from now Dummy. on as 
Dom. Dom. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Andy, you and I are the same person, man. Are you in my fucking brain? Am I imagining all this? <laughs> Is this just a fever oh, dream from oh. my you know? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the rocks in closure. And man, I love how big I, I will say I love how big the island feels on this one. That was one of the things with the original Jurassic Park. Where I don't think we really I at least I never really got a scope that this island was that big that it could that it could have all these massive dinosaurs on it. But I feel like this one actually, I think they did a better job shooting this one. And I think they shot like some of the stuff in 65 millimeter, which goes a long way to like really give you. Oh, that, the whole that. thing. Oh, was the whole thing 65 millimeter? I mean the the whole film was at least full frame. I I don't know actually about the how it was shot, but I read it, somewhere it, they shot it a lot filled of the whole screen the entire time. So I read I read on IMD or one of the little trivia pieces as I was watching it that a lot of the exteriors, like all the island shots that were real island shots, they for sure did an IMAX because they wanted it to have that like larger than life scope. And I think it really I think it goes a long way. Um, let's see. Masrani uh, tells her to anyway, they head over, they take a look right off the bat. This thing should be killed. I'm just saying. Because right <laughs> right? she's like it already maimed one dude and everyone that works there like quit. Uh, and also, it changes colors, apparently. That right there, I'd be like, you, why does it change colors? And if no one can answer that question, I'd be like, hit the big button that gasses this fucking thing. It's didn't it eat die. its twin, right? It did eat it its, ate twin its twin yeah. when they yeah. were growing up. A uh, disagreement, you know. And she, we have a great line here, though. She, he's, she says, think it'll scare kids. And, and Masrani goes, kids, this thing's going to give the parents nightmares. And she's like, is that a good thing? He's like, yeah, it's a great thing. Uh, Dom can sense the thermal radiation like a snake. But I didn't also. want monsters. On monsters. Well, exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, but he wants one of his own, a guy from the Navy, to sign off in the enclosure. And Claire, and Claire's like, oh, God, don't say it. He goes, and his name is Owen Grady. Now, what part of the Navy does this guy Thank work you. For? I have this written know? down. <laughs> because he apparently was like, I think they allude to the fact that he was a Navy SEAL. He knows how to hold a gun. When he straps on the gun, he has that real like Navy SEAL kind of like, you know, it doesn't Great put his trigger, trigger on the trigger. trigger. And he becomes that sort of character and he gets much more of a southern draw, which is very, very weird. Maybe that's just what happens when you put on a bulletproof vest. <laughs> I don't thing. know. <laughs> um, but I don't know any I mean, I could be wrong. This is like a legit question for for people watching out there. Leave it in the comments below. Does the Navy have like a a, a horticulture or like an animal livestock husbandry division of the Navy? Is that a thing that they have? Why would this guy know anything about raising dinosaurs? Weird. Maybe the Army would. Maybe Marines would. Navy, usually water, water based stuff or yeah. flight. Stick by the way, to your as, water we're gonna shit. Learn, as we're going to learn, in, in uh, this blue, uh, this will blow your mind away. A little spoilers for future spoilers. Top Gun. What branch of the military do you think Maverick works for, Tim? The Navy? Exactly. He would be right. He's a naval pilot, not an Air Force pilot. That would be If anything, all I know that like the only animal they'd raise are seals. Hey, everybody. This has been a fantastic in review. Just, we'll see, see you next week. Later. <laughs> anyway, uh, Owen, it turns out, is a raptor trainer. And he's got one of those little clickies that I want so badly for Greg to have. When we moved into the new studio sure. just to get everyone's attention. Guys, and we all have to follow him. We follow his hands. Like this, you know. Uh, <laughs> Nick, stay where I can see you. I see you over there, Nick. Stay where I can see you. Come here. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Blue is his boy. There's also Charlie, Echo, and Delta, but the others know Blue is his favorite. Hoskins is there because uh, he wants. And this storyline is so dumb. But he wants to train the weaponize the raptors, uh, which seems like just a fucking terrible idea. And Guys, he's really able to hack the drones in no time. You can't no hack a raptor. You can't be broad. It really does seem like that whole mission where people were trying to train dolphins yeah. to like to become like killers and work with the military. And that's like it seems like. It's outlandish enough, but it's still fucking stupid because we see the way these things act with Owen and we see that they want to eat his ass. <laughs> like what, what? This is a magic no trick sense. more than control. Well, it's like, a, it's like a lion tamer, right? Or a bear tamer. But that bear tamer doesn't have the ability to give them fucking precise orders to go into a cave in Afghanistan and kill some insurgents. It's it's completely ridiculous. At best, you could drop these things into a city and have them kill a few people before someone rocket launched one of them. You know, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I digress. They have a great line here where he says their loyalty can't be bought. And then he's and then he goes on to say progress always wins. But then of course Owen is like, maybe progress should lose for once. Ooh. Uh and then a handler <laughs> falls into the cage and Owen jumps in to save him by alphaing everyone. And again, Greg, we start acting up in that new studio. I want you to jump in the middle of it and there you go, clicker us. I want you to clicker the shit out of us. Oh. You got it. Cool. Um you're the new guy, right? He says. Ever wonder why there's a job open? And the guy's like, I quit. <laughs> I'm fucking I almost got killed by Velociraptors. I this does not pay enough. It's a minimum wage job. Gary and Zach walk into a petting zoo while Zara's on the phone. They ditch her and head for the T-Rex feeding. There goes another goat. Joey put it on the list. Zach is unimpressed. What number is this? Is this three this is or four? Two. This is two, I think. Two. Okay. I don't think there's a third one. Uh, Zach talks to his mom and rats out Claire. Uh, and then Claire calls, uh, or, or uh, Judy Gurr calls Claire and says, a promise tomorrow isn't worth as much as trying today. And she's like, are you using mom's line on me? She's like, well, mom's lines work. Um, now, let's see. Uh, Owen tells her. Those he are the moments. Like, those, like, lines of dialogue are the things that, sure, they took five seconds. But mm-hmm. it felt yeah, like felt 10 like minutes. Eternity. It <laughs> yeah. felt like forever. And it just bogs this thing down. We don't need it's, to try to build this relationship. We just don't, I know what I'm here for. We get it. We get it. We haven't <laughs> seen me each other see in seven years. Dick, you know? <laughs> uh, Claire heads over to Owen's house, and he says, uh, she says, we have an attraction. And he says, that's not what you said last time you saw me. Bang up loud right there. Uh, Owen tells her he doesn't control the Raptors. It's a relationship based on mutual respect. Turns out they had one date and it went bad, but they do have chemistry, and Chris Pat is uh, is still incredibly good. Do they have chemistry? I, I don't know that I, I don't agree with you do. on this, Nick. Because I think, spoilers for the rest of the movie, the kiss that they have later is the one of the worst on-screen kisses I've ever seen. Really? I feel I don't know. I felt it. I thought they, I, I thought they had a good back and forth. At least I think the jokes sort of hit. Maybe that's what I mean by chemistry. I don't, I don't. I don't believe I, after they leave this movie that they're gonna do anything than 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 bang once and then never talk to each other again. But I like them together in a scene. Kim, 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 Kim. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kim, 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 Kim. The podcast within a podcast where we discuss who has the best chemistry. Right on our list right now, I would say number one, Alan Grant and Ellie. From yep, Jurassic yep. Park, Easy. one I would say that's good. Uh, I'll say, do we want to put William H Macy and uh, and and oh, Taylor no, at no. number two, <laughs> or no. put that at number three? I would put Owen three. Grady. At I don't think two. we've seen any great chemistry. I'm gonna be honest. Even like the first what? movie without it, I I like them on screen. I like both of them as characters, but I was always like, what are they? This is really weird. And the focus on like the kids distraction of like he just doesn't want kids. That's his only plot line. I never liked that. So I don't think I would ever say they had good chemistry. Despite I love them as characters. Okay, individually. okay. But, but okay, Jeff Goldblum has great chemistry with everyone in the movie. So uh, yeah, he's right. Yeah, we'll and that that is one. that's a very good point. Yeah, Jeff. And Goldblum's then we have chemistry. to put him. Jeff Goldblum from number two at number four because he had Oof. terrible chemistry with everyone from oh, Jurassic Park. Yeah. What was Rabbit. her name? I hate her. Uh, really Julianne like, Moore. Julianne Moore. Mm-hmm. But whatever her character's name is, my least favorite Sarah! character. Sarah! Sarah! Oh, you're right. How could I forget? My right least here. favorite I'm character right frame. in the, the Jurassic over. franchise so far. But I would say Bryce Dallas Howard is right above her. Like, I really, I love Bryce Dallas Howard. I think she's dope as hell. I hate this Claire character. Like, right. everything she says, everything she does, is like the worst version of what she can say or do. And I think that she's written so flatly well, that it's yeah. like, she's just the most stereotypical ar- archetype of that character. And that character is annoying and not fun. And you're not rooting for her at all. And Bryce deserves better than that. Andy Cortez. Above or below Tyrese and Al Madrigal in. Oh, Morbius. okay. There. Oh God. <laughs> are we talking chemistry or are we talking just like just on screen chemistry, man? Yeah. Just on screen chemistry. They might be an all time low. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. that might good. be the good, good, good. I will say, Tim, to back up your point for a serious moment, like that is that, that's something that did not occur to me, but that's something that I think I yes, subconsciously you feel, right? Claire's character doesn't really have too much of an arc. She never has a hero moment and she changes, but she needed to they have tried that to give one, her one moment. Where she like hits the button and the alarm sounds right. Where she bucks, she's like, you know what? I've all been, I've been about the ones and zeros, but human life is more important than me. But even, the, even she like makes a couple decisions, but gets a bunch of people killed. And you're like, dude, you. Should, At the end, when she went, like, crazy. him and her, are like, yeah, let's get out of here and fuck or whatever. I was like, you're going to jail. Yeah, like you know, there was a lot of you know just 
corporate negligence on your part here that sure. you're going to get sued into the ground like when the animal was when the animal broke out and you said no it's fine it can be contained in here don't tell anyone that's when no, you go to that, jail yeah mm -hmm. that shit was all bad i do think her hero moment was letting the t-rex out i just also don't flare. think that yeah. her doing that made any sense at all for the way her character was built but i digress we could end the the chem 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 <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the plot. I will say this. All right, fine. You guys, you, you have your, your your opinions on whether or not they had chemistry. We can all agree to disagree. We can all say the, the office sucks. That's something we can agree on. But I, what we can, no. what is indisputable is that Chris Pratt still looked fucking fantastic in this movie because I think he was mm -hmm. still in shape from Guardians 1, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, still. Like, I been, feel like this might have been like prime pratification this is prime pratification right, right? yeah when was yeah, it? When he had that shirtless picture oh no that was from guardians i guess that was leading to guardians guardians was 2014 this was 2015 so like we're he like just was in a full-on like i am that guy and we're mm -hmm. still feeling the ramifications of that to this day now he looked great in this and by the way barry you don't need to bring that up listen to morris of flip flopper we all understand that that's been part of his persona for years uh we cut over to sea world to see the mausosaurus and it's big zach gets all wet and finally starts having fun claire shows owen the new dino but it turns out she has no idea what it's made of owen is immediately concerned that the animal is dysfunctional because it was born into isolation dom is nowhere to be found and the thermal scans come up negative owen spots it's weird that all of this shit never came up before by the way like today was the day that they this thing I'm decided i'm gonna Bonnie. escape this uh owen spots claw marks in the paddock which is a new with word you for me. with you saying dom and owen i'm just thinking of owen shaw and dom <laughs> <laughs> apparently these people someone somewhere was a fan of fast and furious and universal <laughs> has a very small name pool that they play. yeah That's very true uh claire runs to the control room to track the implant in dom's back what meanwhile chris pratt and a big <laughs> guy go into the paddock to investigate uh Lowry. Wait, hold on guys can you imagine if we just replaced the dominant his Rex with Dominic Toretto for this entire movie. <laughs> I mean, I love that's what I did when I wrote this, so it's perfect. So why I'm so high on this movie. Rank it number one. Chris Pratt and the big guy go to the paddock to investigate. Lowry tells her it's still in, in the paddock. Uh, the wrong Missy radios in to tell that, them that Dom is in the cage and big guy can't it's run fast. It's in so the cage. It's, it's in, in the there cage. with you. I was like, oh my god. So instead of trying to run, big guy just decides to open the containment door. Uh, and, and while the other guy that's we don't he doesn't even have a name gets eaten, Owen runs out uh, the containment door well and hide, uh, hides under a truck while Dom eats the first uh, gets the first glimpse of freedom. Uh, big guy gets eaten, so Ian pours gas all over himself or brake oil, but I'm pretty sure it was gas to make him less tasty. Vivian tries to put out an all park alert, but Masrani oh it's Masrani that stops her. Sorry. Less smelly, right? Yeah. What's right. that gas? Yeah, like it. Like, cover I up think his it, humanness. Yeah, I, I, just, I just put tasty because I smell something that's gross, and I'm like, I don't want to put that in my mouth. Mm, sure, you know, but you're yeah. not wrong. But I mean, you know, you got to think you're he's like not right. He goes like this. I smell Andy. Andy smells like a sugar-free Red Bull. I want it. I'm gonna eat him. Oh, oh, right. Okay. See, this whole scene for me, it worked until it didn't. I thought they did a good job of building up the tension, but I feel like they broke the tension in the wrong way. Whereas, like, seeing the scratch marks on the side and, like, oh, this thing's fucking learning. I think this is the best version we've seen of this where we saw an iteration of it in Lost World and we saw a little bit of it in 3. I liked this. of the, They're setting the traps. Like, this thing is smart. It knows what it's doing. And also, we have a character that, from what they told us, Owen understands this and is seeing it and putting it together himself mm -hmm. enough. But he's also in danger. Like, I liked all that stuff. Him getting out, putting the shit on him to, for the smell. All that was great. But then when he's under the truck, the way that this whole thing is shot and when the thing gets out, when Dom gets out and the, the other dude sit in front of the truck, like and the, the dino actually gets him. It is not scary anymore. It feels goofy and it, it feels kind of stupid and it feels like we're supposed to cheer that he died as opposed to being scared and feel the, the tense stress of it all. Yeah. And I'm like, why would you make that choice? Like this should have been a like kind of fearful, scary moment. So the rest of the movie, we're scared of this thing. And it kind of just turns into a generic monster after where you're you're rooting for the monster more than you're rooting for the people. And I, I, th I think the one element that does it uh, and kind of takes it on that wrong path because i agree with you like i think this is probably the strongest sequence in the whole movie um like if you were to just show me this part i'd be like wow i'm excited for this new jurassic park film and i think it's a combination of the truck flipping over landing and then the sort of attack being covered up and kind of obscured by the vehicle and i think if we had 
taken elements from part one where homeboy is getting pulled into the raptor cage and is like like if we saw a part of like maybe the truck flips over and the guy's trying to crawl away then he gets dragged back i think that would have really made this scene uh extra scary instead it does turn into like a you know oh the the chubby dude got killed haha <laughs> he was eating like it's just <laughs> stupid like it kind of made it stupid for me Agreed. Uh, over in the control room, Vivian tries to put an all-park uh, alert, which should have been Claire, by the way, but Masrani stops her. He says, AS, ACU can handle this. Hoskins tries to butter up Barry, and then he pets Delta, who does not like him. Barry gets a code 19, which stands for asset out of containment, and says, quote, these people, they never learn. Uh, Hoskins you calls You work for them. Yeah. <laughs> but you have what to, do you, you mean to, they never yeah. You never learn. Get out. You know, but he's like low. He, he Here's the deal, Greg. Here's the deal. You're working at the zoo because you love the animals. You're not part of the administration. You're there protecting the animals from the poor choices of the administration and capitalizing off of all the good choices by your paycheck and probably a really good benefits package. So shut up or you're fucking fired. Do you understand me, Greg? Shut up. Yeah, there goes your 401k. Exactly, bro, bro. Uh, let's see. Hoskins calls his boss and says we might have an opportunity here in the funniest, stupidest way. Uh, Gary, no, Gray cries because his parents are probably getting a divorce. Uh, and man, this kid sucks. Oh, I missed one. Uh, Zach tells him he, he has to grow the F up. They spot the ACU team off in the distance driving fast while some tourists canoe, canoe with brontosauruses. Uh, Owen comes into the control room. Hot, he wants answers. The ACU heads in with non-lethals and Owen knows they're all going to die. Soon enough, Dom proves them right. Uh, they find a chunk of Dom's, Dom's skin on the ground. Uh, with so the tracking fucking implant. hokey. So bad. You know what I mean? I will make this she entire fucking dinosaur. It. We'll make this entire dinosaur in CG. All right. Well, there's this one thing where they have to pick up. We will make it look like the fakest shit of all time. Don't worry. <laughs> we will make it I completely bro. look like this is a fucking stage play. A fact for you here is compared to all the other movies, this movie obviously uses the most CGI when it comes to the dinosaurs. There are very, very, very few actual animatronics used. Some of the raptor heads yeah, uh, for the squeeze cool. cage in Owen's raptor paddock were actually animatronic. Uh, and then a practical animatronic Apatosaurus head was also created for a sequence film. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love you so much, Andy. You fucking nerd. I would have never known if we had not done this series that you're actually a fucking dinosaur nerd. And that makes you cooler. Uh, Dom comes out of camouflage and kills everyone very violently. But the screen in the control room has all everyone, all the all the soldiers' uh, faces on it and their heartbeats, just like they did in Aliens. And yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, yeah, but like, them, I, uh, they got nano machines or like how are they fucking being monitored. I don't. It's got a heartbeat monitor on you, like they do when, 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 that. They're gonna put me on eventually in like two, three years. I guess I just don't believe that these people would have that technology, as if this is some sort of like standardized thing i don't know it just felt like yeah you have these sort of this technology is usually meant for a movie like aliens (laughs) and we're monitoring like the space crew the ship crew and suddenly it's like all these soldiers are being monitored in this way this it feels like me- Why would you need to know vitals for these? For it this feels team? like having measures like this is very telling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what do these guys get into on the daily? Uh, also, <laughs> don't forget they have fucking holograms like Iron Man. That's yeah. technology that, by the way, would be worth trillions of dollars. Owen wants them to throw a machine gun on the chopper and smoke this thing, but it's worth 26 mil. Only that? It seems like it should be worth more. Uh, yeah, so they won't. I agree. Owen knocks over Jake Johnson's dinosaurs, and Jake Johnson's like, oh, man. And then he leaves. <laughs> Claire closes a bunch of the park down and brings everyone back in. Finally, she does something. Uh, Gray is a nerd, and Zach stares at girls, and everyone enters big balls. A second later, the ride gets <laughs> shut down, and everyone gets really pissed. And, uh, and then, I, just, I just work here. Like, if any of us would have wrote the plot for this movie and watched the scene that we all watched, only Nick would describe it the way he just did. <laughs> like, then they get these big balls. Like, That's why Nick does what right. Nick does, I, man. That, that is, it is. I'm, I mean, not, I'm it's not accurate, though. The science. It's accurate. Yeah, he's right. Look, he's let's right. be honest. A movie where people bring, scientists bring back dinosaurs to open up the theme park after several attempts at trying to do this, where tens of dozens of people have died at the mouths of dinosaurs Mm -hmm. um the most unbelievable thing is that they have controlled steering in these stupid fucking (laughs) balls there is zero percent chance that you would let anybody get into one of these things and like think about fucking idiots who are like oh let's hit the fucking stegosaurus like uh, 
the fact that this is self steering is the most unbelievable thing in this whole franchise. Yeah. It's so stupid. Um, and it's self steering by the other dinosaurs. Like they can go out and just be around dinosaurs. Like like I don't care if the dinosaurs are non violent and vegetation. Yeah. If you spook a, a fucking three thousand ton dinosaur and it fucking hits you with its with its head, I don't care if this is ballistic glass or not. That thing sends you flying. You're getting a concussion. Someone. Well, I mean, dude, serious. they proved. In this movie, yeah. that those things cannot withstand dinosaur attacks. Oh, they cannot. They well, cannot. to be clear, though, they, they they weren't built knowing that Dom was a thing. That's that he was going to be able to bite through their glass and shit. No, so I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking like even the Ankylosaurus it, fucking boom hits that motherfucker with its tail and it like cracks and what and happened? Shit. They all got away fine. There was, yeah, some cracked glass, but they were okay. There they could have rolled on. Glass? The thing is, you put this on rails. So those things must be fucking. I'm expensive. with you, Andy. I'm, I'm you not, put it on rails. I'm not talking about the the like. I don't believe that the glass can withstand anything a dinosaur could do. It's like there's just no way you'd let anybody go in there and like fucking sure. roll up next to the brontosaurus like, like hit it again, hit it again, dude. Like For zero sure. chance. Greg, when you watched the movie Class Action Park, which is that that documentary yeah, about the the water park where everyone died and got sued and stuff like that, yeah. what was your takeaway from that? Did you walk away from that thinking that place looks fun to go to? We should go there? Or were you like, this is a very dangerous place for people and children alike? I don't want to go there. Okay, cool. You are a sane human being after all. I was hoping you'd be like, let's fucking ride. I'd be like, let's go, daddy. <laughs> don't say anyway, daddy. Uh, Lou tells Maserani that they use trog, trog, tree frog DNA and a whole bunch of other stuff with Dom. And that's why Dom can turn invisible and fucking fly. That's what trog is shorts for. It's so stupid. And then Maserani Dude, throws hey, a dick go on. Is it stupid? Yes, but this is the type of stupid I like. I just wish they didn't take it so seriously. Like well, this whole look. thing of like, wow, oh, well, man, what's it mixed with? I don't know. And freaking uh, Chris Pratt's perfect. like. How do you not know? Oh, it's like, well, it's definitely going to be a reveal. And then when they reveal it, it's like all these different things with the oh different features God, of the animals the being revealed. I kind of love that. It's man. cool. Like, I kind of love it. I but it's, it's like, cool. it's just, it just isn't earned in the right way to make it satisfying. It just kind of happens. You're like, God, I wish this was cooler because it is so close to being the right stupid. Yeah, but the other, the other issue that you're up against on this one is that it's a twist, but it's a twist we've already seen in Jurassic Park. Right, because this is a, a reused story line or a plot element uh, from the first movie where they had to fucking remember they were like we had to fill in gaps and that's how they became that's how they could switch genders and and, and procreate. Anyway, it's kind of it, I was like, all right, well, somebody read the first book or at least saw the first movie when they wrote this. Anyway, he's like, you, I didn't want monsters. I'm taking all your work away. And Doctor Wu's like, I'm evil now. Monsters are relative term step. to a canary. Like this, a cat Wong. is a monster. I know. B.D. Wong never. I mean, it's not believable. I was like, deep down, he's still a good person. Uh, pretty cool hey, a good though. shot to bring him back but you know a cool bring him back from jurassic park one after this is you know how big he is now with svu True. the appearance of dr Wu completes the circle of all seven main characters who survived the first movie appearing in two jurassic movies dr ian malcolm john hammond tim and lex all appeared in the lost world while alan and ellie were in jurassic park 3 dr <sighs> Wu and dr ian malcolm appeared a third time in jurassic world fallen kingdom the next movie fun fact Just... bd wong went to my high school that's cool. Oh, shit. I, like I did he, not know I, that. I think it was the year after I graduated, but I still had some friends who uh, went there. He came and visited for some event or something like that, and they all got a picture Dope. of him. Yeah. Uh, he says, monster is a relative term to a canary. A cat is a monster. You're just used to being a cat. Also, Jimmy Fallon's in this. They got him for a little bang-up cameo. Oh, my God. Look, here's the thing. I'm so torn on this because on one side, I love goes, it. Hi, I'm Jimmy Fallon. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, like this movie fucking sucks. I can't yeah, believe they I just did it. that. But then yeah. a second into it, I'm like, this is so theme park accurate. Yep. This is yeah. exactly it's like, yeah, that's why I love it. The, the <laughs> lot tour for Universal Studios. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Oh. So it's like, oh, I assume so it's that's extra why? accurate. I don't know. Yeah. That's great though. But yeah, I, but I love it. It just seems weird. like such a theme park thing to do for sure. Like, get somebody who is a recognizable face that. The majority of moms at home love. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it's like I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was stupid as hell. And I don't necessarily love Jimmy Fallon a whole lot, uh, but I think it's like the perfect thing for this movie. I did it's like no that the callback for the Dilophosaurus. Mm -hmm. And that's <laughs> about it. That's the yes. only thing about that I liked. Yes. Yes. Tim, what were you going to say? To no one's surprise, I love Jimmy Fallon. And I'm going to go to my grave with that. Yeah. And everyone just has to deal with it. They just That's have to fine. fucking That's deal fine. with it. That's fine. Yeah, thank you. Andy I'll fucking deal Jimmy Fallon of video games. Listen, man. Pe plenty of people love shit I also, that's stupid. like Andy James Corden, Joey, deal with it. <sighs> Whoa. Okay. Deal with it. He's got beef with not Patrick as much, Stewart. Definitely not on the same level as, as Jimmy Fallon. But eh, I'm saying it. 
and no one's surprised. Think about me. Think about everything no. you know about me. Of course, I like them. Oh, I would all that they do. Everything you know, all they they do is just like, hey, I'm a fan of that thing. I want to do that thing with that person. That's yeah. all that they do. That's all I want to do. <laughs> uh, Jimmy up, Fallon tells us all about the big balls and the invisible force field that blows Dino's head off like the fucking beginning of Running Man. Uh, Greg, what were you gonna say? Oh, nothing. I think he was. I think he was making a joke there. He was putting a pin in his joke. Oh, I see. My apologies. Uh, we see some stegosauruses, which are neat. Uh, the kid gets a message to return to the resort, but they have VIP wristbands, so they crank they it up. They do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, Claire remembers she finally has fi- she has family in the park and calls Zara, who's frantic because she lost the boys. Maybe we should have darted these little fuckers with a tracker, too. Uh, Claire calls them yet again. Uh, the signal breaks up. This is the second time they've used this signal-breaking thing on the island. <laughs> yes. As, and it's, by the way, the third time's going to come up completely unfucking believable these people have holographic technology and they can't get a simple radio signal to work between their buildings that, that was my thought what like the they, fuck? I, I almost felt like they cut a scene where dom hit a dish or something you know what i mean like Maybe. he did something to make no, it no because they literally try to radio radio them while they're in the paddock right, with right, the end right. it's like i'm like why are you like this is not a problem. You guys are around man-eating dinosaurs. Maybe let's figure out the radio shit. That's like priority one. Let's shut the park down until we can actually adequately communicate with the control room that controls all of our fates and lives. Uh, let's see. Claire calls in. I just got to interrupt the show. Yeah. Because um, I just got a DM from Greg who uh, on Slack. Just me a Why fo- you got to rat me out all the time? He Why just, can't we? <laughs> he's messaged me a photo <laughs> of two children in a toy tank. And I, I'm, I must have missed the thread, Greg. I mean, the, the kids were in the ball in the movie. What's, what's I'm not the gonna, rationale? I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna stop the show to explain my humor. Okay. Kind of. All right, we'll do that. That'll be for the post show, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna keep <laughs> going with the plot here. Claire sends a team of rangers to pick them up, but they're all busy hunting down the fucking giant monster. So Owen tells a bunch of tourists that they're in danger at the gift shop, and she spots them. Uh, and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna uh, need his help." Meanwhile, Gary and, and Zach uh, come to a broke part of the gate that clearly looks like a giant thing has torn through it, and they're like, well, "Let's head cool. through. This will be fun. Let's go." Claire finds Owen and enlists his help. She doesn't know how old her nephews are because she's a bad aunt with a with a great job. Also, maybe Judy Greer shouldn't have ju- yep. shouldn't judge seeing how they sent their kids away for a weekend at a dangerous park with a person that hasn't seen them in eight fucking years, so they could just sneak in a divorce. What a weird set of parents these people are. Gary and Zach's <laughs> ball gets attacked by Dom, and they get turned upside down. Dom smashes the glass bubble and chases them off the waterfall like the movie Predator, which I think may have actually been the same movie. And or maybe it's the same waterfall as I was thinking because I probably finished The Lost um, City, Joey, with Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock. And you want to talk about two people oh, that don't have right. chemistry. Don't That fucking movie is terrible. Oh, that's um, a bummer. It's very bad. Joey, uh, it seems a lot of people like it, though, and just understand what Nick's tastes are and what yours uh-huh. are. So uh, keep that in mind. Joey, give it a while. You, Joey, you watched part of it, didn't you? No, my parents watched it, and they hated it. Yeah, so. it's bad. You should watch it. You won't like it either. Uh, then this is in a weird moment. Dom looks down, and he's like, oh, I'm kind of sad. <laughs> the I'm sincerity kinda... in how Nick just said that. Like, yeah. that. if there's nothing that is more Nick Scarpino than just the, <laughs> you should watch it. Oh, you should watch it. You're going to hate it. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because... Because Andy always questions me unless two or three other people agree with me, which never happens. Uh, <laughs> Zach and Cody crawl up on the mud like Arnold. I mean, Predator. do you not Zach understand and... why he questions you? I mean, I understand everything. and, and <laughs> That is my power, Joey. Uh, let's see. He's, he's like, oh, I'm so I'm, he's like, wow, you actually jumped. And, and, and Grace like, well, that what was my alternative? Getting fucking killed by a 2000 ton killing machine? No, dude, stupid. Owen finds some of Don's handy work um, in the form of a torn up Vegasaurus and the animatronics here, I think, look good. Uh, Claire finally sheds a tear and finally realizes that these things are alive. Uh, then they see a whole f- uh, field oh full of God. dead Bronchosauruses and Owen realizes Dom is killing for sport. He's not killing Now, good here's the thing. Like, the, the idea park. of this, where this thing is just wild in the park, while there are 20,000 people here and the dinosaurs, and we see this shot of the dinosaurs being dead, it's like, it's kind of cool, right? Like, it's kind of like a, a cool setup, but again, it, I just don't think it was set up well. But, like, it is a cool idea for a Jurassic Park sequel, and this is where, like, the fun is in this, where, like, I, no matter what, cannot rank this last. Like, I think this is a better movie than The Lost World by any actual way you're trying to measure it only time will tell hoskins men arrive and barry tries to tell owen but there's more static here and over the radio all owen hill hears is this uh we have a situation here all of our radios suck balls 
Owen finds uh, and and turns up the ham the fucked up hamster ball, and they track the kids to the waterfall. Owen tells Claire she's uh, she wouldn't last two minutes in those ridiculous shoes, and she rips off her blouse and rolls up her sleeve. And he goes, "What is that supposed to mean?" She goes, "What well, means I'm ready." Uh, and then he says, "Just like taking a stroll through the woods sixty five million years ago." And he has a really small rifle; it's almost inadequate. You're hunting a giant thing, and he pays his little <laughs> tiny rifle. Yeah, uh, I mean, whatever he can get, he got. You know what I mean? It's true. I mean, I, I no, no, no. I feel like that's his rifle, and you know, he's like, Navy you, know, <laughs> you know, like sometimes Kevin's like, uh, I'm gonna use this leather man to fix this car, and you're like, there's other tools, and Kevin's like, no, no, no I'm so this is my leather man. I'm gonna fix this whole car with that. I feel like it was the same it. kind of thing. Yeah. One uh, one fact that I haven't read yet that I, I want to say because I mentioned it a bunch of movies ago. A popular fan theory has it that Owen Grady, Chris Pratt's, Chris Pratt's character, is the grown-up version of the boy that Dr. Grant in, intimidated with a raptor claw at his dig site. Owen's understanding of pack hunting behavior could be explained by the warning that Grant gives him in Jurassic Park 1. Owen also says that to work with the raptors, he has to show them respect, something that Grant also warned about. The original actor, Whit Hertford, dismissed the idea, saying, quote, guys like me don't grow up. To look like Chris Pratt. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, so gosh. I'm well, still holding out. We got, we got, we got, we got <laughs> Whit Hertford. I'm Whit well, Hertford. I'm <laughs> Whit Hertford. Oh no, but yeah. I want to see what I don't want to see what he looks like as an adult. Nah, man, he just looks like he a big in, version of the kid. So, <laughs> Whit Hertford just network. looks like a bigger version of the oh, kid. Oh shit, he does, and I know that's how kids work, but this is crazy. Well, <laughs> well you know what I mean. Like, I mean, imagine no, the kid no, from fucking Jurassic Park now looking him bigger. I'm right there with you, Craig. I'm looking at this. I'm setting it to assets right now. Bear can bring it up. He was in the social y'all network, y'all. To... Oh, yeah. Andy, don't try to impress us with your <laughs> muscles and your thoughts. All right. He wears like, he he has a real. Oh, that kid. Style. I thought you meant the redhead kid. No, fucking the kid who's the oh, shit no. in the beginning. Whit and he's like, hurt for her, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, Andy, you fucking know who Whit hurt for her. Is that just one word? <laughs> like, Chris, wait, Pratt, Chris Pratt was, he was fat before, you know, he got prattified. So like, come yeah, on. That's a whole thing. Whit hurt exactly. for her. Don't put yeah, yourself down like that. Yeah, but he didn't like look that. like Whit Hurtford before. You Get know? some fucking abs, Whit Hurtford. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah Whit so Hurtford is a, Show me Whit Hurtford again in the photo. I'm saying his full name. So many, so many, so many. Let me see Whit Hurtford. Now you look at this guy. Yeah, he okay, sure, but like if he if he stopped trying to fucking look like Paul Bear, all right, he'd be fine. You know what I mean? He's angling for the Paul Bear motion picture. Nick, I need you to 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 say I'm Whit Hurtford. I'm Whit Hurtford. Whit Herford or Bert Meg go get a beer every night. You know what I'm saying? Funny, <laughs> yeah, there should be an N- ER on the end of it. Anyway, uh, okay. <sighs> Gray and Zach come across the old lodge from Jurassic Park 1, and we see the cool night vision goggles that the little kid played with. And then they hotwire a 30 year old Jeep because uh, they can, because they saw they did it one time over at Grandpa's house. Hate it. Hate it's it. It's dumb. And, I, and no- like, I. Here's the thing I'm usually kind of a fan of when in movies. Uh, hey, were you followed? No, 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 I checked, I checked. And, like, that's usually all I need to know yeah. that they weren't followed. Just right. a line of dialogue confirming yeah. it. But, like, the the rest of the movie, I just kept making the joke about this of, like, oh, man, look at the big Indominus Rex. Hey, remember that one summer when we read that book on how to take down an Indominus Rex? Yeah, exactly, like, with Because, like, all it is is, remember that one summer when we fixed Grandpa's car? And like that's all that they think they need to get away with this, yeah. and it's the stupidest shit of all time. For it's me, just really, really dumb. For me, it's just the fact that if anyone, if you have any anecdotal knowledge of how cars work, you would know that the gas and the battery in this car no longer work, and that unless you had something to tr- like a new battery, you need like and- a Megan Fox to like fix this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's of just course. so bad. But you know what else is weird is that like it's kind of. I don't know. It's a, it's a character moment for these kids. It's them bonding. I get it. They're brothers. They don't necessarily see eye to eye. But from a plot standpoint, they escape, and then Owen immediately shows up. And then the scene right afterward, they all just rendezvous again together. So it's, it, it serves no real purpose from the Remember actual the plot. Remember the dinosaur tears up the place? He's like, ah. And he's like, well, yeah, you happens. think you got away from me? I'll come through the roof. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. If, if they were stuck in the big glass ball and the kids showed their technical ingenuity – to figure something out there in a very technical way. And then we saw like other moments of them using their brains to overcome some bullshit. But mm-hmm. like for this to be the first moment that it's like, remember when we fixed grandpa's car? 
Let's fix up this old car. Like, so, you don't need to make up that dumb bullshit in order to have the nostalgia of seeing the old Jeep. Did exactly. it work for you in Jurassic Park 1 when she was when he's like, she's a computer dork. She's like, I'm a hacker. And then at the end, she hacks the fucking planet. Um, yeah, it worked for me. Cool. Just making sure it was a double that was Unix. That was a that, that I th- I would argue that works better. And I know you're joking, Greg, but I would argue that Thank works you. better. Thank you for acknowledging it was a joke. Yes. Be, but because in the early 90s, like computers were such a new thing. But that only like, kids knew how to use them. Yeah. That, that it, it's like a, they, they were just making shit up then. You know what I mean? Like, like all of that wasn't real. It wasn't based in actual shit. Whereas like we know how cars work. We all know how cars work right. to some extent. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do that, but like, <laughs> I was, you guys, that was a bold statement. <laughs> but I mean, we know enough to know either we know or don't know how to do that. But we all know that, like, if that car has been sitting there for 20, 30 years, whatever it, it is, not it's work. not gonna, it's not gonna just fucking work. Yeah. But like, I mean, the axles, it, the axle alone would probably be fused. You'd have to fucking probably grease the shit out of that thing to get it to roll. This this it, whole scene was like Andy's saying. It's like it's just to set up the nostalgia shit, and they just did this because they knew the jeeps were step one to getting us to understand. Oh, they're at the same place, so that they yeah, can build up yeah. to. There's the T Rex. There's our homie. Like, all the other things, and like this is step one of a multi step process that is just the rest of this movie. Is that supposed to be it, the same T Rex? You think? Yeah, I think so. Because the marks that it has. It. Mm. Mm. Yeah, from from the other one, from the the, the, the Raptor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the uh, I, I just feel like this part, um, like they felt like they needed to write themselves out of a hole that they put themselves in to yes. begin with. Yeah, uh, and it's just really stupid. You want to make this? You want to make this scene believable, Greg? You got to have one of these kids get a call from the mechanic, being like, "Listen, you want to fix that Jeep? <laughs> we have this parts this part's gonna take two weeks to get here. It's gonna cost you about a thousand dollars." T Rex has lived about twenty eight years, by the way. So that T Rex is gonna be pretty weak well, and feel long in the tooth but fuck you but you i guess these are man. actually he's got di- he's got the dino and frog dino dna nice, mm. uh, nick Greg, did you have you, a problem back to the future three when they stored the delorean uh in the mine shaft for like 100 years before they got it out <laughs> yeah no but he had a problem through, probably he got a he had a problem in uh james bond with the, <laughs> with the that doesn't Martin. make logistical sense andy <laughs> at no <laughs> i'm not gonna get into that i'm not gonna get into that <laughs> Anyway, Hoskins comes in, dick swinging, and tells Maserani that the Raptors follow orders now so they can hunt down Dom. Maserani tries Dom. to act moral, which is completely not believable, and they load the chopper with a minigun. Maserani decides to fly the helicopter himself, and we all know how this is going to end. Gary and Zach take off in the Jeep. Seconds later, Owen and Claire find the garage and get attacked by Dom. Uh, Claire calls Jake Johnson and updates them on a situation with the helicopter, uh, and then uh, Maserani has a great line. He says, did you, gen- you guys military boys, did your general ever fly into battle with you? To which I was like, <laughs> I wish they just had cut to one of the guys when when Maserani wasn't looking being like what the fuck is this guy talking about right <laughs> but see my thing is like, I'm lies. happy they didn't do that because the, instead they had the restraint to have the punchline be he just fucking dies in this yeah, helicopter he he like destroyed. it is one of the most shocking movie moments I think I have ever seen anytime I see this I'm like <laughs> That's actually what they did. Like, it kind of feels yeah. like that joke Toy Story yeah. 3 thing where they're going into the, the fire and then someone edited it so that the yeah, credits yeah, get yeah. there. Like, <laughs> it feels like that. Like, this feels yeah. like a how it should have ended YouTube type joke. Like, there's no way a real movie with this budget was like, we set it up earlier that he doesn't know how to fly yet. He's going to die here. <laughs> it's yeah. just, I mean, that's, I think it kicks off a bunch of stuff here where again, it becomes kind of like a horror movie, it becomes the birds here, right? Because yeah. again, I, I sent. I think uh, Tim, Andy, and Kevin, the TikTok, I don't know if you got it before, I think I got deleted, of a guy making fun of Jurassic World here, where when the pterodactyls come in and grab the assistant and tear her up and eat her and throw her around and get her in the water and feed her to the, the Meg or whatever, the guy's like, they murder this woman who was just doing her job. Like yeah. She was the villain of the picture. Yeah. All she was trying to do is be an assistant and take care of these kids, and she's brutally fucking yeah. murdered. It's yeah. so comical to the point where if Tim were to tell me that, oh, by the way, that assistant didn't get along with a lot of people on the set, <laughs> <laughs> and she was eventually fired, and like this is how they killed her off because of that. Like that would make sense. That's how far it went, and it just kept on escalating and escalating. Uh, it looked really cool, though. It was dope. Uh, mm-hmm. As as Greg said, Maserani crashes through the thing. It lets out the pterodactyls back in the control room. Uh, everyone watches in horror. Uh, Vivian cries, and Jake Johnson makes a face like he just farted and smelled it. 
Owen and Claire get uh, get get chased by more dino birds, so they run. Uh, Gray and Zach get chased by more of them. They head toward the hotel. All the guests bake in the sun, and then the TDs attack uh, and start picking them off one by one. <laughs> Zara gets eaten by the whale. Hoskin watches from afar. Did you just call oh, it the TDs? Yeah, the TDs. <laughs> I love you so much, Nick. <laughs> TDs, pterodactyls. Yeah, uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Hoskins. <laughs> the pterodactyl starts with a P, but okay. <laughs> oh, I'm saying it phonetically, Joe. Phonetically. Now this is a, this is a fun part. You want to talk about a fun role that was fun for old Vincent D'Onofrio, right? Uh, sugar uh, in water, uh, more. Sure, no water. They just they just cut over to him standing on the research, like the helipad for the research facility, and he's just gets a little bit of a boner. He's like, Ew. and his dick just grows a little bit. It's so Ew. fucking weird. It's God. so weird. <laughs> 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 this fucking see yo sometimes it's the dumbest movies that get the best in reviews <laughs> <laughs> does his dick really grow <laughs> but he stands there he's standing there like he's and he has a look on his face like he's just got turned on man it's so it's, weird it's, like, it's, greg for a second i was like did i miss you all right because <laughs> the way nick was like it's really weird <laughs> In the middle of all that, uh, I was trying to send this photo of Whit Hurt for It kept not copying correctly. So I just kept sending the message. Whit Hurt sending the oh. name, the, the text. Whit Hurt Furter to Slack over and over and over to not just the people here, to everyone at Kind of oh, Funny. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is where I wrote this movie could be less long. Uh, they start non lethally darting everything, and Claire saves Owen so they work out. Oh, man. Hoskins uh, relieves everyone of their posts and brings in his own specialists who don't use non-lethal weapons at all. They use lethals. <sighs> the boys really feel safe with Owen. Meanwhile, Hoskins, I do like that they're like, your boyfriend's a badass, and they're like, we want to stay with you. No, no, we mean him. Uh, Hoskins preps the Raptors with head cams and night vision goggles uh, to go after Dam. Uh, Owen confronts Hoskins, who tells him the Raptors hunt is happening with or with Adam. Seeing no other choice, he joins up to protect the Raptors. And he says, do not shoot my Raptors. And this is where he just turns into like a comical Navy SEAL for any, uh, you know, any like movie like The Rock. He's just like, do not. Uh, anyway, Claire stashes the kids in the back of the truck, thinking they'll be safe. Then they reminisce about a fake ghost that used to haunt their house while a real life terror dog outside waits to hunt all of them down. But I guess a bonding needs to happen between these two brothers so that's cool owen uses the pound of flesh from dom to get the raptors all revved up and off we go uh on the hunt and he's and this is where they go your boyfriend's a badass and it's pretty cool him riding she with smiles. the raptors she's is like, stupid mm. yeah she's like yeah, yeah i get it because we have good chemistry even though fucking greg doesn't think we do um the raptors hunt down dom but instead of attacking him they just have a little chat with him turns out dom <laughs> is part raptor <laughs> and blue and the gang protect their own and that's how it is huh immediately Owen goes, watch your six. Raptors got a new alpha. To which I would reply, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what? <laughs> you know Wait, exactly. what? Uh, they got that? a new alpha? I'm like, what? How did you know? Why? But the way he says it, Raptors got a new alpha. Very weird. Um, the Raptors make quick work of the team. This is a great scene where they're just hunting them. The tails are all going up and it's all dark and stuff. Leaving Owen pretty much by himself. And Barry's there too. Charlie spots him and then uh, gets blown up by an RPG. Barry watches the rest of the group bug out and then hides in a log while Blue tries to eat him. Owen distracts the beast and takes off his, in his Triumph cool motorcycle. Uh, the Raptors attack Claire and the boys, so they take off. Uh, and the Raptors give chase. Zach throws tanks of oxygen while Gary cattle prods one of them. Uh, Owen finds them and leads them back to the research uh, uh, section while blue and another raptor cut through the forest. I love that section. They just watch the tree. They watch the thing go. They look at each other and they just cut through the forest. Like they know. We, oh, I know where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> what? You've never even seen that area. Whatever. Uh, I guess they have senses of smell. Uh, let's see. Doctor Wu screen cheating a, with the cameras. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Doctor Wu gets a call from Hoskins who tells him to clean the place out. Jake Johnson tries to be a hero by staying behind and then uses that moment to try to kiss Vivian who shuts his ass down. Uh, Doctor Wu makes it. Off I thought that island. was a funny. I mean, I think it's again weird and almost from another movie, but I enjoyed right. the interaction. Yeah. I have a boyfriend. Improv. Oh, you never talk. You never talk about him. I'm at work. <laughs> that was an improv line from Lauren Lapkus. Oh, that's funny. I have a boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> 
We see Dr. Wu make it off the island with all the dino DNA. And when Claire and the gang get to the lab, it's empty. Uh, They see all the specimens that went into Dom, including an albino snake and all that stuff. And it's scary. Hoskins keeps pushing his his, uh, agenda, but gets caught mid-monologue by Delta, who eats his hand off. And that was the scene I was talking about. We're the same. We're the same. That's a fucking, you know this thing that can't understand what the hell you're saying. Or unless you're really stupid and think they taught it English. Uh, They run out to the quad, but get surrounded by Blue and the other two raptors. Owen tames the beast and takes off the headset, which they all which is pretty much all they really wanted to begin with. Uh, then Dom shows up, and Blue has a change of heart. Not in my house, he says. He looks at Owen and tells him to run free. I'll see you in another life. Then he gets housed by Dom, as do the other two. They all just get thrown about. Um, Gary, no, Gray tells Claire they need more teeth. He's like, oh, eight teeth. We need 28 teeth, or whatever. Uh, Was there ever gets- a worse line delivery slash line in movie history? Like, no. out of all motivations they could possibly have, teeth. More teeth. <laughs> I don't How know, like, get the you? fucking what minigun the fuck? again. That's what I yeah, want. The let's mini get the minigun. Gun. Not just more teeth. What a weird thing to say. Very strange. Uh, Dom corners Owen and the boys in a kiosk while Claire tells Larry to fucking man up and open paddock nine. Claire pops the flare as the door opens. Hold on to your butts and welcome back to the stage. T Rex. This scene is so not earned, but I don't care. I don't yep. give a shit Straight because up. when we see him for the first time, I'm like. Why not? Yeah. Let's go. Let's Goosebumps. Go. Yeah, goose it's bumps. good. Uh, let's see. She books it in high heels. This is the thing I always, everyone always kind of jokes about. Uh, and then chucks the flare at Dom. And the main event begins. Dom definitely with with the, the height and reach advantage. Uh, just beats the shit out of Rex. Uh, but then uh, uh, she puts Rex down and goes in for the kill. But who, what's that I hear, Andy? What's that I hear? What's cool. that I hear, Andy? Cool. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Raptors are back. You're my boy, Blue. Comes straight out of fucking nowhere and straight starts put, run running interference. Uh, Rex straight pounds Dom in the Shamu cage, uh, and Whale Dino does the rest. Uh, then Rex looks at Blue, and and Blue looks back at Rex, and both of them say at the same time, "Do we just become best friends?" <laughs> and then Rex is like, "Cool, I'm just gonna leave now because I'm pretty nonviolent." We get uh, the Rex Rock and, the, and Vin Diesel scene. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Um, no, this sequence you. like. Thank God they didn't want to kill the humans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really fortunate that they were just like, whew, that was a crazy Tough thing fight. we just did there. Uh, let's go on our way. And the humans are just like, like, that's the most fortunate, stupid shit of all time. But <laughs> the sequence is pretty hype the way it starts off. I would actually argue that Blue looking back at Owen and then Owen going and then Blue being like, OK, and I'm free now. Uh, just jumping. I would argue that's stupider. But he runs off and he's like, I'm free Dobby now. He's a kill free elf energy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Greer and the dude she's divorcing show back up and everyone's a happy family again. Claire finally realizes she wants kids or at the very least wants to be an Anne. Owen finally changes his shirt. Over at the research facility, T Rex takes his rightful place on top of a two story building. No. The end. That is Jurassic World. That is Jurassic World. Don't you love it, everybody? Andy, please hit me with the theme song. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If it's not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form just like Joe Mertens did competently shot it's aggressively okay judy greer squandered always love good use of words in these haikus so shout out to squandered there uh grant burton comes in with a double whammy the dinos are back the park is under attack franchise back on track they bring in chris pratt the helicopter goes splat sticks to the format uh miscellaneous of course comes in with the plot and haiku kids bound for the park Big bro needs redemption arc. Theme song missed the mark. Keep Paddock intact. Need expert to ensure that. Hey, look, it's Chris Pratt. New (laughs) breed they create. Intellect, she demonstrates. Indorex escapes. Injun takes the lead. Pratt's objection, he concedes. Raptors move with speed. Dinos changing teams. T-Rex brought out on the scene and still stands supreme. Uh, I, I'd look correction for the future in case you do submit this haiku to another show that has a haiku sh- show mm-hmm, where they mm-hmm, review mm-hmm. Um, t- uh, Jurassic Park movies. You said Indo Rex. That's three mm-hmm. syllables. Mm-hmm. How about Dominic next time? 
Got it. Mm-hmm. That would have been good. Just that would have been good for the future, you know. Mm-hmm. For when we do the uh, rewatch. Now- <laughs> exactly for <laughs> when we do the rewatch. <laughs> now it's time, of course, for Ragu Bagu. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys here for Jurassic Park in review. And no matter how many times I do this show, Tim, you would think I'd pull this fucking list up. <laughs> Hold on. It's all Someone good. Else. Number one, we have Nedry, Wayne Thank Knight, you. and Newman. Number two, we have Ludlow and Roland. And number three, we have JP3, Spinosaurus, and Velociraptors. Where do we want to put Bob Hoskins? <laughs> and in Dominus and Dom. Bob Hoskins. Hoskins and Dom. Where do we want to put Hoskins and Dom? Um, man, just pretty forgettable as far as, um, what's his face? Vincent D'Onofrio. Mm-hmm. I just feel like. Just a very stereotypical. On the just, bag well, now. yeah, stuff yeah. We have, we've all, we've seen before, right? Nothing like even the Indominus special. Rex we saw before in the other one, we're like, oh, it's just a bigger T-Rex. That's all we, you know, we care But the about. invincibility is super sick. That is pretty Yeah. Cool. I'm I'm a little torn on it because it's like I love Vincent D'Onofrio for how stupid he is and how stupid this whole plan is, but I just don't think it fits this movie. But like comparing it to the other ones, like I mean, I feel like I have to put this number two. If I'm being honest, <laughs> it's upsetting. Yeah, like it's not Nedry at all. But like, God, I do think it's better than Ludlow and Roland in Lost World. I'll agree. I gotta agree too. Yeah. Two. Throw number yeah. two. Fuck it. It's our list. We can do whatever There's we want. There's a Fuck it. <laughs> big gap between one and two, but. All right, I'm putting Vincent D'Onofrio at number two. Perfect. And Dom. And Dom. Yeah, and Dominic Terrell. Yes. Um, we have a, an important update from Greg Miller, of course, uh, requested to, um, you know, follow. He's oh, not Robert very Herford. active. Winter Hertford is not very active on no, the good. old Twitter, but I good. have requested his private Instagram. And so I, I, will and keep I love you how posted. much uh, you're you're number one in his fan club. You already have a, a portrait of him um, on your wall behind you. I love it, Greg. That's what I do here. Yeah. Greg, twenty minutes ago, you sent me a picture of a small boy on a kid's ATV. Mm-hmm. You want to? Would you like to explain that? No, I just like Andy. I don't explain my comedy. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Good, good. And then Tim also sent me a, a very important update as well um, for is Nick's fit the fit? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Please bring this up, Barrett. Yeah, the whole episode um. I was thinking, I was like, what does Nick <laughs> remind me of? Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until Andy said Amazing Spider-Man because of Mr. Maserati. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God, it's six Spider-Man. And then it's I Googled the six Spider-Man. Guy. And then I realized it's not just six Spider-Man. It's mm-hmm. six Spider-Man and Nickelback guy combined. Yeah. So, yeah, see it. so everyone, see it. you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tim. You've never said cooler things to me in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Now it's time to rank the dream. No, it's not. No, oh, it's what not. the fuck? Oh, you're Which right. You're right. The death is The death is better than all the rest. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, um, did you also see? Oh, wait, never mind. Um, so I, I feel like there are two deaths that we should consider. I feel like it's pretty obvious which one it is. Uh, it's got to be the assistant girl just getting yeah yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The by all the, that's the one yeah by all the pts as nick calls him PTs. um but i would like to give a shout out to the like co-pilot in the helicopter who just gets a pterodactyl straight right in the, the chest oh, sure. right sure. the window yeah that one Darn. also very intense that was fucked up yeah but i feel like with the assistant they were just like hey how far can we take this without uh, the people up high saying anything about how ridiculous this is. Yeah, how can we push it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Let's get rated R. Let's go. Let's just I mean, okay. so, rated R rating. So we all agree it's the assistant death. Yeah. But uh, what is the current ranking, Joey? Uh, I don't know. Don't you have the ranking? Hmm. Um, yes, I do. So number one <laughs> is God the you, Nedry Tim. death from number one. <laughs> I wasn't here two, last time, so I was short. Gotcha, one. gotcha. Number one is the Nedry death from number one, and number two is a tie of the dual T Rex takedown of the fate, tied with the Odensky bait death from number three. Mm. Where do we want to rank the assistant? I'm gonna get crazy here. I think it's number one. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna so say it's joy. number. I'm gonna say it's number two. 
I think obviously it's way more theatrical. It's way bigger here. I think Nedry's death meant more to us because we really fucking hated him. Me too. And there was this thing: is he going to get away with it? it? Is he going to do this? Is he going to is he going to get off scot free? Kind of thing. So we were rooting for the old uh, pinwheelosaurus there to spit the shit in his face and get him. Don't and so I, that's why I like him. Whereas this one is so over the top, and it's like you aren't. This person wasn't bad. This is just a horrific thing that's yeah. happening right now. I'm with yeah. Greg. The, the, the Nedry death had weight, right? The whole thing is like Nedry was trying to get away with this thing, and then it was all for naught because he dies. And also, the, when he gets in the car and looks over, and the thing's like, that thing's scary as shit. That's one of the scariest scenes in all of these franchises. Yeah, no, so you, you guys are right. You're making a lot of good points. I do just want to put out there, we're not ranking which death is the best. We are ranking which death is the best. And I think that for me, You're right. I'm sorry, I take Tim. that, You're I looked right. at it, I'm like, I had so much fun with this, and it <laughs> kept going. Like, if it was just the toss back and forth between the pterodactyls, I still think I'd be arguing for this to be number one. But the fact that that is just the beginning of this, like, 20-second thing that just keeps going and ending with the big-ass guy, I don't know, man. That's, that's where I'm at. Joe and Andy, where you at? I'm with Tim on this one that I do think this is number one because uh, it is, I I don't, I'm not, I I haven't been putting the like character part of it. I was just looking at the overall like theatricality of the actual death sequence, not really including the uh, who is being killed. And that's why I think this one's the most fun. Yeah, I think it's so I think it's the Beth. Yeah, which movie was it where he goes, I, "I'm gonna, I will shit in your mouth and then make you shit and then I will make you eat the shit that you just shit." Is that's that a, a James Bond Bob Strike Back. Yeah, that's right. That's what this death reminds me of. Where it's like, oh, the thing bites her, and then the other thing bites her, and then the whale bites the thing that bit her, and then it shits it out and bites it again. You no, are the ones there. who are the ball lickers. That's right. That's right. I'm putting it down then as number one. The assistant Boom. jumped a shark death by the TDs. There you Thanks go. Thanks for fucking that up for us, Andy. Me and Nick are real happy with you. Thank you. <laughs> and now it is time to rank the Jurassic Park movies. Currently at number one, we have Jurassic Park. At number two, we have Jurassic Park 3. And at number three, we have The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Greg Miller, I want to start with you. Where are you going to put Number two, World? ladies and gentlemen, this is the second best Jurassic Park behind the original. Nothing will ever touch the original, I assume. I don't know if I've watched the next movie, and I think there's a third one we're building up to, right, that I have not watched because it's not out yet. Uh, I doubt any of those will ever be able to top Jurassic Park. However, I think this is the best follow-up we've had to it. It's the most enjoyable movie. It's the most enjoyable cast. Uh, even though I don't think there's chemistry between Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, I think there is chemistry between the other characters and this, that, and the other. They're entertaining enough. Uh, the effects look good. The deaths are cool. It's a I like to see the take of a, this. A, they kind of lean into it. It's going to be a monster movie. It's going to be a horror movie. It was fun. Joey. This is number two for me as well. Thanks, Joey. Number two for Andy. <laughs> well, any more thoughts? Just no, I, uh, Greg, you nailed it. <laughs> Joey Noel. Um, begrudgingly, it's a uh, second. I feel like, uh, in my mind, if I am doing my star ranking, uh, this and the second one are kind of the same. Once I account for the second one being thirty minutes shorter, so it gets a half star bump. Oh, you know right. how this goes. Gotcha. Um, but I think that overall. As much as I don't care about Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, I care about Julianne Moore and uh, Jeff Goldblum even less. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought you were this is the same like, runtime as Last World. Oh, just kidding. Oh, Last it was World's the actually third one is thirty longer. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess then it still edges it out <laughs> barely because I like these characters a teeny bit more than I like the ones from two. Um. It has fun deaths. I like seeing the park. Begrudgingly, I put it at two because I'm not happy about it. And it's mostly that I'm not happy that there is a better <laughs> Jurassic Park movie than this to go in the number two spot. Joe, you're, thank your lucky stars you weren't a part of the Transformers in review. Wasn't was. I? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> Nick. Um, Greg just sent me another power toy, which is a kid dressed up as Batman for no reason. Uh, I'm with Greg on this one, firmly at number two. I think this movie's way more enjoyable than the than Lost World and Jurassic Park three. Um, I think it's got a lot of new stuff in there and some commentary in there about the the old movies that I find somewhat interesting. And I just like Chris Pratt. I think he's kind of fun to watch for a couple hours. Um, so I put this at number two. Yeah, I mean, I I have a very soft spot for Jurassic Park three, and I think that there. Are, 
the heights of Jurassic Park 3 are higher than this movie, but I think that the Jurassic Park 3 is not really a movie. It kind of is just like, hit go, uh, and now we're just done, and it's kind of weird. Um, so with that, I've got to go Jurassic World is number two, and I'm very, very sad to say that because I think that this movie has a lot of fun stuff, but I don't think it earns the fun stuff, and I wish that it did because if it did, I'd be excited to say that it's number two. I'm with greg and everyone else that i don't think the first one's ever going to get touched the first one very much is a 10 out of 10 perfect movie i love it uh but for these all being sequels i think all of them are trying to do something and failing at it and that is really sad and i hope that the next one or the next next one uh fix that but i don't have too much hope let us know in the comments below if you have any hope or if you disagree with our rankings that are currently number one, Jurassic Park, number two, Jurassic World, number three, Jurassic Park 3, and number four, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Uh, like I said, next week we're doing Star Wars Episode 3, the week after that, Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick, and then the week after that, Fallen Kingdom. Uh, the next Jurassic World movie, and after that, Jurassic World Dominion. Thank you all for joining us. Till next time. See you later, everybody. Give me a car. Cool. Thank you.